Welcome Spiceheads. My name is Darren Schoen. I'm the Director of Technology Infrastructure for the Broward Center for the Performing Arts in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I'm also author of the upcoming book, Getting Started with Spiceworks, and a Spice Trainer. We're here with the panel live today to talk about BYOD. We had such a great and large reaction to our webinar we did a couple weeks ago that we thought we'd come back and talk to you about this live. We want to thank our awesome sponsor, WatchGuard, for actually being able to come to you today live. And you're going to be able to ask us questions. So I'm going to turn it over to Todd to let you know how you can, uh, how you can get those to us. And hey, thanks so much, Darren. It's Todd over here at the Social Media Lounge. And as Darren said, we're going to look forward to all your questions today. So you can either do it via Twitter using the hashtag SWBYOD, or you can do it right in that chat log at the very bottom of the live stream window and uh, we'll get those questions up to the IT pros. So Darren, back to you. All right, thanks Todd. And we're gonna get to some of your questions a little bit later. First, I wanna introduce the panel or actually let them introduce themselves. Let's go. Hi, my name is Robert Harris. I work for Austin Digital Incorporated right here in Austin, Texas. Uh, I su basically support from the IT perspective and anything electronical uh, in that regard. A bunch of creative software and uh, aerospace engineers. And uh, with the change in technology, uh, BYD is definitely a hot topic, and I'm excited to be here and see what happens. All right, great. Hey, Nick. Oh, man, I'm sorry. I was just checking the community. I saw a post about this BYOD webcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Nick Corte, a network administrator at Anchor Fabrication. You can find me in the community at Network Nerd. My job is simple. Protect the network. Make sure the servers run. BYOD, threat to the network. We'll find out how to protect yourselves. <laughs> My name is Michael Villarreal with Management Applications, uh, small MSP based out of uh, Austin, uh, Virginia, and California. Uh, we have a large group of uh, customers that we uh, deal with, everything from K through 12, colleges, uh, Fortune 500. We've got a large uh, following that we uh, that we work with. Uh, my, hash my tag in the, the community is I Michael V. So if you want to follow me, feel free. And I'm Spankmeister in the community. So if you and format 3D, format 3D. So if you like what any of us have to say, or just want to bother us, just follow us within the community. All right. So BYOD, right? It means it sounds like we've got a really a mixture of environments that that be between us four. Um, what is what does BYOD mean to you, and what policies do you have, uh, you know, for that? Uh, for us, BOIDs, anything that's not in our control, anything that's coming into our network that, as an IT person, I don't have access to. And a lot of times that's, you know, either ethical or technical type of connectivity or certain hurdles we'd have to overcome. And in our policy, being a small company, uh, we went to the paranoid side and uh, more of a uh, thou shall not pass. We just don't support that kind of thing in our internal infrastructure. All right. Okay. Great. I'm in the manufacturing world. We service, you know, defense industry, oil and gas, trailers, things like that. So we, we've been so small for so long and we just grew from one to four sites in the last three years. So it's kind of been trust and trust and trust and now it's becoming bust and bust and bust, if you will. It, we're getting to the point where we have to have a policy and right now we're trying to make one. We, we have a lot of, we have more tablets and phones than we do laptops coming in. I mean, if somebody brought in their laptop off the street or from their home, we probably wouldn't allow that. But, you know, we normally don't put something on our Wi-Fi without an executive approval. Don't give VPN access without some kind of approval there. And, but mostly you'd find people with access to their email, something like that in mm -hmm. our environment, contacts. They might be using a tablet or mobile device to access our company intranet system, which is proprietary info. So it's definitely a challenge there, and we're working on a policy right now. Just met with HR the other day. Oh, oh wow, and that's always the first step, right? Yeah. And that's it. In our case, you know, BYOD is, is pretty simple. It's access to our tool sets and everything, you know, that goes with it. Uh, all of our uh, employees are technically oriented. So pretty much everyone has access to bring whatever they need, whatever they need to use to do their business. It's pretty much covered there. Uh, if they can't fix it, uh, you know that, that's a problem on the on the technical end. It's going to be more of a, a personal issue than anything else. But you know, obviously, we support each other as, as far as that goes, and uh, that's really what we 
we do as far as the BYOD. So basically your company is just one big IT, IT department. Because we all know as IT pros, we always follow every policy, right? Of we never course. bring our own stuff onto the, onto the, <laughs> onto the network. So I mean, at, at, the, at the Broward Center, we've, uh, we take a somewhat of a hybrid approach. I do not allow any external devices on our internal network. We've got actually two physical networks within our, our building. Um, this is due to uh, some PCI requirements um, that, that we have. Uh, we do allow people access on their mobile devices to our email system. That's pretty much open access. I have filters that filters out any kind of proprietary or sensitive information. And for those with a business case, we provide remote access to their internal desktops through a service that has has the apps for you know iOS, Android, you know, um, and then if you're on a regular uh, PC, it's right right through a browser. So we have also locked that down so they can't transfer any files or anything, and and things like that. So and it's you know we've got a pretty pretty wide ranging um, uh, set of policies here. W what kind of challenges or what's the challenges that you've had with uh, supporting end user hardware? For us, it's it's that because of our paranoid approach and being able to lock it down, you run into the problem. Like, yes. Thou shalt thou not pass, pass, man. Exactly. We have to now, you, you can't say that and say, yeah, go work, and then put the shackles on. So you have to provide access to be able to get into different things. And how do you do that without stepping into their personal space? BYD is their devices. Right. You know, so how do you, how do you actually facilitate that? And we do similar things where we provide a specific set of hardware, and that's, it just makes it simple on us. But in supporting that, now I've got two, do you have two phones? Do you give them two computers? So that it becomes trying to balance that act and make it easy on the users is always the hardest supporting case. Ah, giving them the access they need, yet still fulfilling your security requirements. Exactly. It's always the balance. Speaking of access, we, we kind of, we probably go farther than we should. We have a lot of folks that are out on the road, in hotels, doing business development. And a lot of them had, had issues because the IP they get over our VPN connection is on the same subnet as the IP of the hotel. You know, it's using the same, <laughs> <laughs> the same mask and, not good. and IP scheme, and that's, good, not, that's not good. So we got them these AT&T Wi-Fi cards to kind of help with that. But, you know, I've reconfigured people's home routers before because it had the same IP scheme at the office, and the DNS server just happened to be the same IP as the client lease on their machine and their home <laughs> network. So <laughs> it's... It's a challenge, you know, probably just need to re-IP the whole network. That would fix uh, most of it, wouldn't it? Yeah, probably. It's on your list, right? That's right. It's, it's on <laughs> I'll make a ticket list. for that right now. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in our case, it's more of a business case, uh, mm -hmm. so, you know, All of our tool sets are web-based just for that purpose because our customers need access to the tool sets that we provide. And because of that, we're able to provide everything to ourselves and to our end users and our customers with as simple as a, a web browser. You know, if they have a phone, tablet, computer, it doesn't matter. Support is pretty, pretty minimal in that, in that scenario because everything that, we've, that they need is just based on the you know, right version of Java, you know, things of that nature. It's pretty minimal as far as uh, support goes. So we're able to, to support hundreds and hundreds of people with very minimal uh, support calls just for that. Oh, that's we great. can focus on our core business, which is infrastructure support. That's great. At the Broward Center, we, we have a policy where we do not officially support any mobile devices or any personal devices. That said, we probably have a couple of people month come in and say, I just got a new phone, can, I, can you help configure this? Um, what we ended up doing was putting guides like FAQs on the Spiceworks U user portal where people open uh, tickets. Android, iOS. Black, Blackberry, back when it was you know more a little bit more in favor, um, and then that did help as well. But we all know that our users love to read those facts instead of just walk, walking down and saying, "Here's my new phone, fix, fix it for me." So that's that's great to start off the discussion. Todd, do we have anything from the social social media? We do, Darren. We've got a lot of people chiming in on a chat window below in that live stream, and we've got one. Um, that's asking uh, from Rummage Sale, uh, what are folks doing about phone numbers and separating personal and business communication? I think you guys kind of touched on that with the whole making sure you're not into the private um, personal information on their BYOD. 
All right, well, thanks. Phone numbers. Per personal, pr private, people calling their, their, their personal phones for business use. Do you guys, do you guys let, me, let me ask you guys, does your company provide mobile devices no. to your users, phones? We, we don't. No? We do provide some. Some. Some people have phones that are, you know, the phone was paid for by the company and the cell plan is paid for by the company. Some have, the user bought the phone, but their number is on the company's plan. Ah, okay. You know? Some, we don't do it, but some places might even put a soft phone for their PBX on there and allow company calling that way. Ah, right. I don't know how well that would work, though. Yes and no. Uh, some do, some don't. And again, it, it pretty much just boils down to the, the person who's using it and what it's for. And, you know, we, we're pretty relaxed as far as that goes, as long as they can still answer the customer questions. Uh, down, down at the Broward Center, we do not provide anybody mobile devices, whether it be, you know, tablets, you know. Um, phones, anything like that, and um, so everyone's mobile devices are their own personal ones, including their numbers and everything. Um, there is a, uh, for some users, there is a small stipend every month that the company does put a little extra in the check, but there's no, it's not the, the company owns the numbers or anything like that. Have you guys ever found any kind of challenges with people balking that, that especially with phone numbers and things that they're calling too much on their personal plan? No? I haven't heard yes. anybody complain uh -huh. about that, but I don't handle the billing for it either. Right, right. I got, well, you know, everything kind of does flow through IT, because if billing right. got questions, sh it would work their way up and then back, back down to you. Yep. Yes, right. that's how it usually works. All right, so I think that an answered that question. Todd, we got something else? We sure do. So here's another good one from um, Hypercube33. Um, he asks, what about remote wipe on BYOD phones? Sounds like a bad idea. Yes. What do you guys think? Uh, yeah. yeah, that goes right back to invading on the private space. And for us, that's always been a big issue of separating that out. Yeah. We don't have the mobile devices. We control the devices, so we try to, we do have that mobile wipe. We have that ability to say policies for expiration of data, policies for being able to wipe or locate and that kind of ability. And since it's our, our data, then it's not spilling into the private sector then that, and that private phone, then we've avoided that situation. Mobile wipe, good or bad? Two kinds of remote wipe. You know, you can, if you have Exchange 2010, you can completely wipe the person's phone. It wipes everything. Mm -hmm. And some of your MDM solutions will wipe just the company data. Yes. So, you know, depends on which one you want to go with, what your company policy is. Our CEO is not in favor of just wiping someone's device out completely, but more in favor of just wiping off the, the data that's that, ours. Yeah, yeah, compartmentalized data on that, on that device itself. In our case, we, again, since we don't really provide equipment, we don't wipe anyone's phone wipe or anything of that phone. nature. And again, most of our stuff is already on our servers, and you know, so there is really nothing to wipe except for browsers and, and so forth. So it's pretty much, it works, it works well for us. Uh, now our customers, on the other hand, again, we have K through 12 is, is a big one that's been really pushing a lot of mobile devices and so forth. Mm -hmm. You know, every student has to have a tablet in hand and so forth. You know, in those cases, they own the equipment. Their policy is pretty set forward that, you know, if they have it, if they misplace it or so, it's going to be wiped, uh, whatever, regardless, until they locate it again and such. So, it, uh, so yeah, it just really depends on, on who It depends on, yeah. At the Broward Center, we don't we don't have that policy. After the webinar we did a couple of week, weeks ago, we got so many questions around this area, I reached out to some uh, other of my cohorts um, out in the world, and there are a lot of people that have a policy where if you want to get on the, the company network itself, if you want to get the company email, if you want anything like that, then you have to install an MDM app onto your mobile device. You sign the paper saying, you know, I agree, you bring your device in, it gets installed, you connect it to their network, uh, you know, you, you connect it to your administrative server, and then um, that way, not so much if an employee leaves, more like if you leave the phone in a bar somewhere. Right, mm -hmm. if you you know lose it in a in a in a, ta in a taxi, if you lose it like that, where you don't know who.
who might get that information. Or even an exchange program. Right. The big yeah. thing about buyback, being able to take a hundred dollars cash, get the new latest smartphone with smell vision or whatever, that guys guys are going in and changing. Smell vision, I, I there you go. I, I got I, I, I gotta go. get that one that's right. <laughs> Scratch and sniff. There you go. There you go. But you have no idea where that's going. Now right. it's it's their personal device that's now in somebody else's hands. Your, if you took what your sales reps have, for a good example, all that data, proprietary IP quotes, pricing, yes. and gave that to your competitor, uh, it's basically what's happening. Worst case scenario. So, yeah. One thing you could say, Darren, you know, if the if the if it were right for the business, the business could take the position that if anybody leaves the company, whether terminated or on their own. We wipe the device. Mm -hmm. The user is responsible for backing up their data. We're not liable for data loss. You and could do that. Yeah, well, that's and that's part of the policy as well. It kind right. of depends on how much risk you're willing to take with your data. All right? For for you, it's not so much because everything's web based, right? Exactly. But one question I do have, you know, when you do have. Uh, you're, you're wiping a personal device, for example. Right. You know, what would you do in the scenario where you've got, you know, a per, you know, person backing up to iCloud, for example? You know, everything will be backed up. You might wipe it once they get their phone back and log it back in. They can just restore everything. It, Is it there depends on what MDM uh, suite you use, mm -hmm. it, but there are some that do compartmentalize anything that is downloaded through that that app through that email account through anything like that that does not get backed up that is basically in its own little basically like vir virtual machine inside your phone and that wouldn't be and that would not be backed up that is that because it's locked okay so once you know um once you do the kill switch then all of that data just goes away right um and does it, that require a connection though that does require a connection, yes. So if it's airplane mode or dead, if it's airplane mode later. or dead, yes. So I mean, if 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 someone goes into a lead-lined room, I suppose, and <laughs> and powers it up, and uh, they would be able to get into that. But it's, um, you know, it, if you're dealing with someone that's smart enough to do that, then you know they're you're probably going to get it. They're probably going <laughs> to get it anyway, right? Yeah. Well, and if you need to protect your data, is BYOD really the alternative? Right. Versus something that's controlled. That's I, controlled. Whether it be something like you, where you provide the devices, or even a lot of people use VDI for, for B, BYOD. Mm -hmm. Okay, so having a virtual desktop environment, having clients uh, for their home PCs, for their mobile devices, basically you're just turning whatever device they're using into a thin client. Mm -hmm. It connects into their desktop li living in their virtual environment. And you don't have to worry about file transfers. You don't have to worry about anything. They're just sitting there working on their computer. And, you know, again, it's using it, their own devices as thin, as, as thin clients. Yeah, you've removed the, I need to touch your personal yes. information, your technology. I'm not involved in your network. I'm not involved on your, personal, your device at all. You got it. You, whatever you you know you do is 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 what you do, yeah. Again, with with our with us, I'm I've never had to deal with uh, uh, a home a home user's computer <laughs> or a, uh, one of our users' home computer. Um, I don't know actually what I would do if I got a call at seven o'clock at night from somebody saying my home computer can't connect. I would probably try to connect. And say I, I can. It must be something wrong on your home network. You you should call your ISP. Click. <laughs> That's probably <laughs> what, what I personally would do, but again, mobile devices and phones, we, we, do, we do get a lot of that. Todd, back yes. to you. Yes, we've got uh, yes. Lots, of, yeah, lots, lots of questions coming lots in of from, questions. The, Bring them on. from the Ustream and the Twitter feed. So this one comes from the Smorg. Uh, he's got lots on controlling devices. What about empowering users' mobile devices? Mobile access features in use? Empowering users' mo mo mobile access. That's, it kind of sounds like what, what you're doing right right now, right? Correct. Yeah. It, you know, again, it, it, a business case scenario was it's, it was purely to make things easier for you know our own internal staff and also for our end users because they need access to those tool sets. We don't want them to have to troubleshoot the tool set. We want them to troubleshoot their networks. We want them to troubleshoot 
their access to you know what's going on with the internet or, or why their customers are calling why they can't get sure. to their email we don't want them to have this as another level of issue uh, so we made it as simple as possible and and yeah it, you know and everything works great with tablets or phones or anything if you can handle the small screen and can you can type really small <laughs> then you know you can use it on a phone there we go and such but you know again that was business case and that's what we we chose to do and that works really well for us great great i mean go I, think, ahead. I think it goes back to kind of what you were saying with the wiki articles the how to's here's how you can set up your email you know maybe as long as we get approval from your boss that this is okay right and you know you also need to be mindful when you're deploying a new application for the business what level of accessibility to the employees is required you know consider that when you're going to a new ERP system or upgrading your mail server that kind of thing absolutely and it, it I think it also depends on the level of security that you need to have as an organization Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's it. You're very sec secure, yes. right? You're not so secure. May may maybe you need uh, some need of that. the band hammer. <laughs> I do need that. That's right. He needs more band hammer. Um, so, you know, for, uh, for us at the Broward Center, we're a, a public entity. All right? So the, what's called the Sunshine Laws in the state of Florida means that all of our emails, all of our communication uh, is publicly available. Yeah, so, wow. I mean, yeah, so it's, plus we need to archive for X number of years, right? Um, so, uh, for, you know, for us, I'm not so worried about that kind of stuff, because if someone gives us a court order, then we have to provide it, just like any governmental agency. We're quasi-governmental. Um, so, but, you know, so pretty much anything that goes through my email system is public record. Right, so the, you know that's a, a you know a challenge in itself. I've got to I've got to balance that, meaning that you know if that was the case, then I could just have every everybody connect to it, and we don't care. But we have also something we we do credit card processing, so we have PCI requirements. All right, where um, we need to be cert certified as as PCI compliant. And if we don't get that certification, if there is a data breach, then we are liable for massive fines and all those losses. Not to, you know, not, uh, not to mention the loss of reputation and things, right? So, you know, there, on the one hand, sun sunshine laws, everything is publicly available. On the other hand, we, we need to have the regulations, right? So. It's, um, it's how much risk and therefore access are you willing you know, to go with. So it sounds like you're focusing as an IT guy coming in and looking at what you need to protect. Right. I mean, obviously, if your email is open to public or you have to ed have a burden to educate your users to not be sharing specific information via email. Yep. So you have uh, systems in place that allow, that makes your bring your own device a little bit easier, right? Because mm, yes. now you bring your own device is now, especially email where it's not a VDI or that kind of thing, where it's, now it's its own device. And you're, this data is stored locally, is not as sensitive to you. Or in our case, it would be. If there's certain things you want to make sure. And in your case, it's that, that credit card that you, you've isolated that in the network. Do you have access to that in your B, bring your own device type? I mean, you, you've kind of separated those things. This is the data I need to keep really secure right. and, and, and to lock it down. And then anything that falls under that, maybe financials or accounting or anything within the business structure is just segmented into there. Do you yeah. have bringing our device access into that at all? Uh, no, no. To be honest, we, the only BYOD uh, access like that is, again, the remote access into their desktops, basically like an RDP session. And so from there? From there, they're on their, their network. It's as secure you know, right to their mobile device, right? Whether it be their laptop at home, their, their desktop at home, their tablet, their phone even. But I can't, I mean, I can't imagine trying to use a desktop on, <laughs> on a phone, right? That's, yeah. Um, but, you know, so that's secure from the endpoint to the data. It's one secure line between the two. Um, and on the network itself, there's, you know, there's a lot of safeguards that PCI requirement has. You've got to have all your uh, sensitive data uh, encrypted in the databases, things like that, 
right? You've got to have limited access to those to those databases. You've got to have limited access to the room those databases are stored in. You've got you know all that all that stuff that we have to do, um, and that is one of the reasons why I don't allow external devices on our internal network. We focus a lot on mobile, and bring your own device can also be removable media, right? Oh, sure. So that's in your own secure environment versus actually external. How, how do you handle that removable, bring your own device in? Do you allow the various types of things that continue to come on? USB, US, Google Drive. Google Drive, you know, we had, you disable USB drives on, on all of our desktops, all right? Um, and as far as Google Drive, Dropbox, what I ended up doing was setting up company accounts and then being able to, hey, here's what we have. Come to me for access, I'll give you whatever you need. Oh, because if we didn't do that, okay, and I'm, I am the administrator of that whole account, I can see what's in, every, what's in everything. I share out specific folders to certain people and say, okay, there you go. go. And you I get to bring your own device into a control into company a contr device. But right. their perception is is their own stuff. Right? Hey, here's 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 your folder. Put in whatever you need. If we need to share a mock-up of this, you know, rave card about the new show with our designers, put it up there. Right? They they I mean they have full control over it, yet. I've got snapshots going on in the background. They can seemingly delete it from there, but it's not deleted, right? Um, you know, I'm like the shadow master in the back, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right, it, it's uh, just because that way there is an audit trail if some, you know, it's information, sensitive information does get out. Yes. If something happens, I can see who put it where, you know, so you have some export control. Yes, that's pretty. Solid. But from the end user standpoint, it's a, it's all that. Well, in that case, how, how, you've control all that stuff. Do they have access to those online removable devices, bring your own devices from anywhere, or is the is yeah? It, so oh. they can pull that information out of that device. Yeah. locally. Uh, yes, they, they, like for example, like uh, the Dropbox account. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's they can get that when they're at home. They can. Do what whatever they need. All they need to log in with their with their with their credentials that that, that we set up. And so, so they can get and in that case, it's something that it's more of the trust factor. That how do you implement any controls over that data? Like in, in the we were focused a lot on being able to wipe the phone and the email. How do you control the, the data that comes out of those? I, I get a report on what was uploaded every day and what was downloaded and what was taken. downloaded and stuff like that. Okay. So if there's any kind of um, funny business going on, I can just go in and look and see what those files are, all so, right? I'm not too worried about <coughs> sensitive data, meaning from a PCI standpoint, credit card information, personal information, because it's all encrypted within the database. That said, someone with some technical knowledge sure. and some skills, if they got on my network, could probably try to pull that from the database, even though that database is pretty locked, you know, lock, lock, locked down. Let's say someone did. Now they've got all this hashed information. If they upload that to a Dropbox, something like that, uh, then I, I get I get a uh, report of it and I can go in and have a look. That's part of it. It goes back to your export control being able yes. to trace it down. Yep, mm -hmm. to trace it down. We need to have that audit trail. Sure. Right for for the for the you know for the PCI compliance. Uh, whenever plus we we as as a quasi governmental entity we have a audit every year for financials for security things like that from a third third party coming in. I love to be able to go into those meetings and say here it is and have the guy be like wow all right right because if there's something that isn't there if there's something that you haven't thought of if there's something that that um, a hole somewhere, if they pick on that, then they're gonna start cr trying to dig around, right? So you just mm -hmm. kinda wanna hit, hit the home run on the first pitch. You know, that's it. So, yeah, that's a great conversation. Todd, 
what do we got? What do we got from the social lounge, sir? Yeah, so we've talked a lot about mobile devices as yep. far as like cell phones, but what do you guys think about tablets? And can you talk a little about the risks that you guys have seen when people bring tablets in and the OS systems and what you guys are seeing as the, the strong OS systems that kind of make you feel comfortable and sleep better at night? And also talk about the big uh, stories that you guys have had about viruses coming on the tablets and how you've handled that, if any. Mm. Ta tablets. Tablets. On your internal networks. Well, we have a lot of company-owned tablets. Okay. Okay. All right. We have shop foremen and whatnot that need to be checking jobs flow through the shop. So those are company provided. We've been putting Meraki on those to, you know, if we need to wipe it, we can. It's not a big deal. Okay. Um, All right. But user-owned tablets. I haven't had anybody get a virus or anything like that to bring it into my. Knock network. on wood, man. Come on. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> knock, 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 knock on, on the wood. van hammer. But. It can, you know, it can certainly present risk. And like I said, you know, we've been fairly open to putting those devices on the network, which needs to change. Right, right. And for you, uh, again, you know, tablets, web browser, it works. Oh, it works right. well. Yeah. We have so it doesn't matter if they've got a virus or not. Yeah, exactly. For for us, it's the it's an it tablet is is for us it's the same as any kind of desktop or anything like mm -hmm. that. We've we've stuck to the VDI approach. You have some sort of secure mean of connecting through a VPN, two-factor authentication, all that kind of stuff. And then we're presenting our controlled environment to the user. So whatever they have on their end, whether it's a user, whether it's a third party, a vendor, customer facing stuff, you got, you got to put that wall, we've, we built the moat. They've got, right, so they're, they're, they're quarantined to their own sections. Yes. Yes. That's a, some very similar to the Broward Center. It, it, I've found that if I give my users a, a, an alternative uh, way of doing their work that isn't too, you know, jump through hoops, right? Then they're going to embrace that. We've got two separate wireless networks with, with, within many areas of our building. A completely separately wired external network on a separate internet connection that's wide open, right? We don't have any kind of any kind of uh, firewall, anything like that. And we tell people it's wide, it's wide open, you know, use it at your own risk, go ahead. And then we've got our internal ones that only our devices are on. So we really don't have any, uh, and we haven't had any issues with, with viruses or any kind of, um, uh, any, you know, any kind of that stuff um, coming on our network, because they don't, because they, they don't. Um, in talking with, with other people that I have, uh, some policies for BYOD and tablets, again, part of the policy is requiring them to get uh, an antivirus on their device, mm -hmm. right? That's, mm -hmm. okay, bring us your device and it must have, you know, X, X antivirus, um, you know, and then we're gonna put on this, this MDM app, whether it be, you know, Meraki, you know, Mass 360, whatever it is, and then know that if you lose the phone, if you leave the company, if something happens, we're gonna wipe, we're gonna wipe, we're gonna wipe, wipe, wipe it, and then, and then that's it. So, uh, we hope that answered answered your question. Wait a minute. Yes. Some of those. Wait a minute. Some Time of out. those. All right. <laughs> Rewind. Some of those antivirus solutions like GFI Viper do have the MDM capabilities, so you could kind of get your two for one that way. Yes. Yeah, Just a thought. You could get Speaking of, of VDI, technology is getting better in a lot of ways. Internet's getting faster, and then mm -hmm. the whole, uh, the whole land yards. But is anybody? I, I would assume some of the engineering stuff you guys face, three D graphic intensive kind of things. Mm -hmm. I mean, in your VDI solution, do you, do you have a? An, uh, that doesn't always work. You need the power of something local. Three sure, D sure, graphics. Sure. Sure. Well, I mean. Yeah, uh, V, a lot of people have implemented VDI for the BYOD aspect of it, but there are so many areas where um, VDI is not going to work for you. Sure. All right. If you kind of approach VDI like uh, like you approach your server vir virtualization, it, at the end of the day, that's not going to really work the way you want it to. And I don't want to get off on some kind of crazy VDI tangent because I love VDI and sure. I can talk about it all day. We would need another two hours on this. See this Spice this World stream. 2012 video. On yeah, that, that's <laughs> right. The Spice World 2012 um, uh, the thing I did on VDI, but um, uh, uh, because 
you know, yeah, for certain graphical applications, for certain things like that, yes, it, that is not going to be the solution for you. But what about for, you know, the marketing ma manager that does email and, yeah. and just back and forth stuff, you know, stuff like that. The, the everyday perfect. things, easy, thin client, this works. Yes. So yes. The, the bring our device, I guess that comes down to policy of what BD, BID is going to really do. Yes. If it's going to be something that requires a lot of local resources, then your alternatives are a lot less. So you are going towards more of a controlled device. Device. Or you find another way to have that user um, uh, connect to that device, right? For us, we, I mean, we use, a, uh, we use a product that is basically like a VDI client, but it just, it's, um, actually, it's, a, it's log me in. Okay. All right, so we use log, log, log me in so that that's got a Android app, iOS, and you can get to it any web browser. Boom, and I, I've got it locked down in the back so they can't transfer files, they can't do stuff, they can basically just full screen it and it feels like they're on their, on the, on their computer. Right, so I mean that a solution like that, you know, um, where it gives them remote access to that desktop, that's you know that's that's a uh, thing. So, Todd, yeah, the, oh, actually, oh, the oh, other thing not, is wait, wait, almost he's, down he was that, about to jump in. <laughs> down that down that same line, you know, even within a, a, any corporation, uh -huh. there is no one size fits all. You know, sure. Right. You, you can do what you can. You try to make some global policies, but there is no one size fits all. Except the IT department is best. Of course. Right. I mean, that's, that's, the only, that's the only thing that is, yes. All right. We are one department, are so it works out uh, well. Uh, but, you know, if, from our customer's perspective, you know, you know, K through 12, for example, you know, mm. even within that organization, you know, you've got uh, you know, instructors, you have students, you know, you have administration. Each one of those groups has different requirements, have dis you know, different capabilities and so forth, you know. If, if an instructor breaks a policy, you know, it's usually you're out, out the door. Right. A student breaks a policy, you can't just kick him out the door. You know, right. you, you have sure. other issues you have to deal with and so forth. And, you know, so you have to give each one what they need for, you know, the, the tool sets that, that's, that are available for them and such. You know, but again, that, those are the questions that I've received from my customers and what they've been seeing. And, you know, they're asking these questions. You know, those have actually come up pretty often here uh, recently. So, you know, we're definitely diving into a lot of those pieces. I, I don't make policy. All I can do is recommend, and it's up to them to decide it's what they're going to do. Um, what they want to implement. Exactly. And they say, we want to implement this, and then you just implement it for them. Exactly. All right, I got exactly. you. Exactly. Cool. Uh, you know, in a, in a lot of ways, that's a great spot to be in, mm -hmm. right? You don't have to make the hard decisions, but, you know, it's, um, you got to be, it depends on what the policy is, but sometimes you have to be the bad cop. Yes. Right? And it pretty often, <laughs> pretty, pretty often, and someone comes up and says, "Hey, you know, uh, why is this? This seems under." And you get, you say, "Talk, talk to so and so." We just, we're just understanding yeah. the risk and making sure they understand what they need to do. Yes, yes. All right, I think we're ready for another question. Yes, yes. All right, <laughs> Bring Todd, it. over to you. All right, thanks, guys. So the next question is again: If you have a question for our IT pros. You can use the Twitter hashtag SWBYOD or just shoot it down in that chat window below and we'll get it to the IT pros here. So the next question is from Rummage Sale. He's asking, um, what kind of MDM solutions do you guys use? Do you have any um, good recommendations for free or low cost MDM solutions? You know, um, free or low, or, or low cost solutions, what do you guys think? Meraki's free. You can put that on your tablet, smart device. Scott Allen Miller actually published a how-to not that long ago about how to push software installs with Meraki and something called Chocolatey. Oh. So you could do that on laptops, desktops, stuff like that. Mm. But, you know, one limitation of, of Meraki is it is free, so you don't get all the, as many granular features as you might with something like a Mass360 or something you pay for. So something like, something but like that. But, you know, it could work. It could work for you. It, it can. It, it can. It, you know, it, the funny thing is, is that with the communi uh, consumerization of IT, right, it, so many of uh, the users now, it used to be that their work computer was awesome and their home computer was stinky, right? Now their work computer has been sitting on their desk for three years because it's on a four-year lease, and they just bought a brand new computer at home that is as or more power powerful than, you know, even a new computer they're going to get at work, 
right? Mm -hmm. So this is it, it's a huge, huge topic, and you know, it, it right right now there's a you know a couple of the, the the leaders that are free and 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 low cost, but uh, I really have a feeling that in the next you know six months there's a lot of products that have this in the in their pipe pipeline to to deal with right it's what you know what is out today might you know um, is not going to be what's out tomorrow right I mean especially with this becoming more and more and more of a challenge for businesses right um, and, the, and the space is changing you yes. may or may not have tablets or or a giant TV that has a computer in it I mean, it, 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 the, the space is changing what you have in your home environment. Oh, and yeah. what your users, employee, you know, customers may need to be, want to be connecting through. Where the one simple platform of being able to say it's a web browser, it, mm -hmm. it works in a lot of ways. And it seems to be more technologies coming out that allows that, that VDI and that, that kind of environment. But. Yes, yes. But I get, yeah, again, where you have that application layer between your data mm -hmm. and keeping that safe and still letting the user access it in a in a way that is going to make them work without you know without it being too intrusive mm -hmm. you know that's just you know that's the balance that you know we all all have to all have to uh, you know d deal with as I, I, I to you guys all right Todd yeah so yeah, <laughs> yeah. lots of questions lots, lots of, of questions so uh, <laughs> the next one comes from Jack N eleven. Uh, he's asking, can you guys, or do you guys have ever, or can you know if you remote wipe unwanted applications installed on a device? Have you ever done that? Have I, have, have we ever done that? And do you know, if, do you know if it's possible? Oh, it's possible. It's possible. You can have, you can have a policy within your MDM solution that says, I won't allow this device to install X Dropbox or, or Tor, SkyDrive, or, SkyDrive or, you know, smell a vision Whatever it might be, you know. Damn it. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, Damn it. <laughs> maybe we don't want that in our network, Darren. Right. I don't know. <laughs> or just for the IT uh, department. Just, just only, uh, and, only IT people. And you could set those policies for different groups. I mean, it just depends on what you need, what you need to restrict. And you also get into the legality of, okay, am I going to restrict this application on this user's phone? You know, it's, it's Jim Bob's yeah. phone. How can I keep him from installing Dropbox? You know, is that is that my right as a as the business who only owns this information? You know, it's kind of a it comes down to the, to the policy that you set. Yep. Uh, and them signing that policy. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, if, if for everyone out out there, instead, you know, I think that as we were as we were talking, it's not about what mobile solution that you're going to grab. It's you need to come up with a policy first because you're going to find an MDM solution, an MAM solution, whether, whether it be that application layer between your data and thing. You need to come up with a policy first. And then once, get that signed off by everyone in the company. And then once that's signed up, then implementing a solution to that is a lot a less hassle than you might think. Well, if yeah. the policies thought out and put into place, then the solutions become mm -hmm. narrow focus. Yes, I mean, absolutely. I, for me, and I, I, being able to remove or touch something on somebody else's device, just, it's possible, but I don't know if we'd want to do I that. don't want you touching my device. Man. Exactly. <laughs> I, 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 we will leave those, you know, it, <laughs> but if you, our policy has been more of, we're just not going to let you in. Right. Right. No, shirt, no, no shirt, no shoes, no service. Right. You know, and, and it, that it removes it. And, but that has its own complications. What if they, if they need, if the business requirement is there, they have to, you have to simplify that access. Now you got to start focusing on what they have access to so that you're okay with that risk that they have Dropbox. Right. You know, yeah. So if your policy, it, what user is connecting, what, what are their needs, what are they going after, then that changes what your, your policy is. Can I, do I really have to restrict things? Or do I need a control device that controls that? So. Now, well, down, down that same scenario, can you use the same products to identify, make it a policy that you don't have Dropbox? I, maybe I won't delete it for you, but if I identify that you have installed it uh, later on, 
then we could you know follow that up with the appropriate you know email through HR or so forth right. you know versus you know intrusively going in and just either wiping it sure. or or doing something of that nature because maybe there is something some policy that's changed or some business case that has changed that all of a sudden makes this something that's required you know, you know from IT at least from my perspective you know we don't like to you know, stifle anything. We, if they, there's a reason for something, you know, we'll go with it. We'll figure out the reason and what to do to it to make it work. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because you know, that's that's what we're supposed to do. We, we make solutions. You know, well, we that's don't right. we, that's we don't cause we do. a problem. We make magic happen. Exactly. That's you it. You know, so identification and then you know follow up with a policy and then if it has to, it's up to them to remove it, uh, or otherwise remove the access. Right. Maybe you stop active sync if that happens or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's it's this is conversation is very similar to those conversations in the community. Okay, I'm going with des I'm going with server virtualization. What SAN should I get? Well, do you really need one? Does there the business we go. requirements dictate that? You know, so business I've requirements got, I've got policy seven and I don't you know, and they're all local so. Yeah, exactly. And that, that works for us. So it's right. what does your business need? What are your uppers willing to Accept as the level of risk that this presents, and then that gives you your solution. Which, yeah. as you guys said, it's easy to implement once you have that. Once yeah. you have that, and that's really the you know the, the toughest challenge here, right? I mean, how much risk are you want to take once you get the solution in place? Then your MDM is kind of like you know buying a car. Okay, I want to buy a car. Well, what kind of car do you want to buy? Right? Sure. It's mm -hmm. you know, okay. No, I want a four-door sedan that gets good gas mileage. No your options are narrowed a lot, right? I mean, that's it. Um, you know, it, you're not gonna try to, you know, uh, someone's not gonna try to, you know, sell you a four by four, right? If you just want a little mini, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's, you know, the, that's the thing is that how much, and, and that's a really tough question, questions to people that aren't used to dealing to, to talking about that kind of stuff. Right, the mm -hmm. C level folks, the guys with the, the letters after their names, you know, if we come to them and say, okay, talk a bunch of technical jar jargon, you know, they're they're gonna start to fade out, right? Sure. Yep. They glaze their eyes. Part of our job as IT pros is to be able to communicate to them what the risks are in real you know, in, in terms they can understand. And implement it into their vision and what their job is, yes. where they're trying to steer the ship. So yeah, Giving absolutely. them the risk and the value. And at the same time, I mean, let's be honest, there's a certain level of reducing the IT pain factor. Yeah, oh, well, yeah, of course. So what, what, course. what implementation that can you look at that's going to make your job easier? Yes. yes. It, can you, that's why we standardize. That's why we make things, certain level of policies that make things, if, if you're, st if you're going to take on any other device that's coming into your network, that's a big job, big task. Well, sure. And that might necessitate another person in the IT staff, which they don't want. Sure. They may not want to spend that money, so that's part of your, yeah, that's good. That's it. Well, you know, coming up to, uh, uh, to my CFO, if there's a really hard issue that we are, ta that we are uh, we're talking about, risk, things like that, I'm, you know, what, what, whatever it be, BYOD, you know, our file server is going to fail, something like that, I'm always prepared with a sheet of paper telling the risks, right? And then if he says, no, we can't do this or no this, and I just say, okay, then you just need to sign this. And at the end it says, I understand what these risks are and I understand that this may happen. Sure. Just do me a favor and sign this. Sure. Risks as well as at, at some level that we always get involved in finances. Right. I mean, it's, it's the harder, it, there's software involved. Yes, there's a software implementation and it costs so much per user, it costs so much to support the server and it's an ongoing support cost. Yep. Okay, boom. But what's the harder to quantify support and labor of IT staff? Of I, I, IT if staff. If something well. goes wrong or if, if, if reputation's on the line, th those are all risks and things to quantify for them. But a, as an IT person, how do you take that? And, and the mobile, to bring your own device is just, yes, it's, it, it's a, I mean, what do you guys feel? Is it something that is just inevitable that we're going to have to? face or is it just the new trend that we continue to you know stay paired I can re remain in my paranoid state and say no <laughs> I think it depends on the industry yep. and the level ri of, of, ri of risk you want I think that in certain areas I think that um, for you you're like yeah for you yeah bring it on yeah exactly you you're, you know, do your own, your own thing whereas for you because 
you have that higher level of security that you need to maintain, you, you've got valid reasons to not allow that. As long as PCI uh, uh, compliance is an issue in my industry, I will never allow external devices on my network, period. So, you know, it's, I will give them a way to connect in on their own devices, but as far as someone bringing their own laptop in, setting it down on their desk and starting to work on my network, yeah, thou shall not pass. No, yeah. I'm not going to allow that because if there is kind of any kind of breach and we are not PCI compliant, then that's millions of dollars that we can lose. And that's just not a risk that we're, that we're you know, ready, ready to take. Did you want to? Well, I was just saying, don't forget to put that signed document in your Dropbox. Or your yeah, Skyzone. there you go. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. In the, in, 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 uh, in the Dropbox. But it's funny because when you're talking to the powers that be, talking to them is one thing. Having them sign something that changes their perspective. Mm -hmm. Because you can sit in a meeting and tell someone something, but if you say, okay, I understand these risks. These are the risks I'm taking by implementing you know, if my if my CEO comes tomorrow and says, I want every I want every user device on our network, I would come and I'll say, These are the risks. Sign it. Yeah. I mean if you sign it, uh, okay. I mean I'll 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 do it. But you know, if so if someone gets a virus on our, our network and our sites go down and our email go, goes down, yeah. all right. Sure you're gonna save a lot of money. We don't have to support their device anymore. They can bring their own around, buy anything. Great, it's cost savings. Cost savings. Well, here's the other no. side. Of that. The, the 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 other side is that I mean, it's it's if our site goes down on a huge on sale, we can lose seventy five hundred dollars an hour. Yeah. Right. That's in one hour. How many hours do you want? Right. Right. Yep. What's we acceptable? we don't want to go down. You know, and so we we lessen that chance by not allowing those devices on. So, all right, Todd. Todd. Darren. Todd. Darren. What's going on? <laughs> uh, so, hey, we're going to do some rapid fire questions. So, hopefully, you IT pros are ready for this because we've got lots of questions in the queue. So, we're going to go for it. So, let's see here. First one's from Dylan ATX. How do you handle document management such as mobile printing or scanning? Go. Mobile printing, scanning, quick. Don't allow it. No. <laughs> Don't do a lot of it. No. <laughs> Figure it out on your own. Figure it out on your own. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you can't. No, no one can print to our printers from mobile devices. Next. Okay. Next question from the Big B eighty six. Can non-container MDM solutions battle up against container-based systems aside from the price? Go. Depends on what your requirements are. Some can, some can. You don't know. Not you sure. don't. You don't. You, you don't. You use them. Dependent upon policy. On the policy. Yeah, it can I work agree for you. with both of those. That's exactly right. It depends on the policy that you have on whether you're going you're gonna to need to wipe it or not. Okay, next question from ICRVA. Darren, specifically for you, are you using Dropbox for Teams in your org setup? Uh, you yes. Answer that. Okay. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> next. <laughs> there we go. Answer, right? Yeah, boom. Uh, next boom. question is uh, from Rummage Sale again. He's asking, are there any decent, fr uh, nope, we already asked that one, Rummage Sale. Uh, uh, next question go, from Matt Rhodes, 986. Get with it, Rummage Is the mobile wipe feature in Microsoft Exchange sufficient? Go. Sufficient. I, we don't run Exchange 2010. I've only read about it. Do you? Yeah, we j we're in a migration right now. So we have some folks on 2010. Funny story. We, uh, on iOS device, works fine. You try to get an Android device to pair with it, you get this message that says, Enable device administration. That means that this server can have access to disable the Wi-Fi. And we had a guy go kind of, whoa, I, I, don't, I don't want that. You know, ah. I don't want you doing that to my device. And, right. and well, so again, no email this necessitation for policy. But the answer is, yes, it can be sufficient if your policy says we can, we can wipe the whole device. Because that's what it will do. OK. Great. All right, continue Next. with our lightning round of questions. Lightning Dave round. Johnson, Johnson Jacob. Uh, for BYOD Network, do you prefer software authenticated public Wi-Fi or normal WPA key authentication? Go! Go! Software authenticated Wi-Fi, they got to log into uh, some kind of portal or just key? Internal, ex ex nothing internal, external, it's a key. External, it's a key? No comment. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> we all know what that means, don't we? <laughs> all right. We, we like using the keys for. Yes, we, we also use a key, but uh, 
we are, I am going to implement a sign-in sy system. For our internal network, we use a key. For our external network, it's, wi it's wide open. Next. Okay, next question from Help4614. What's your opinion on de user devices connecting to your company Wi-Fi? Go. User devices connecting to mm. company Wi-Fi. Thou shall not pass for me. <laughs> yes. No, same. yes. Same for you. It's coming to be quickly. Coming to be quickly. But uh, where are you right now? We are. You can, but we you don't can. give the key out. Okay, I got you. Guest access. Yeah, just, 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 just guest access. Yeah. All right. Okay, uh, next question from Gilligan79. How about users saying they should be paid overtime for conducting business on their mobile devices or off hours? Go. Def deferred HR. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's if, if I got paid overtime for all the time I'm on my mobile device, I'd be a rich man. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, it, that, that's it. So it depends on the department and that department's po policies. Right. Yes. yes. And it depends on if you're hourly or salary. I mean, if you're salary, it, it doesn't matter how much you work. Well, it, it depends on the company. Oh, right. It depends on the company. Well, that goes back to the, the personal versus the work phone. Work phone, I can turn off. Uh huh. I'm not answering anymore. Right. Personal, I've seen it. I feel obligated to answer. Well, with, with us, I run a theater, which means that there are shows going on to 10 or 11 at night. If there's a problem there, I get an email. Some, some people I get a call. I do not put my number out to everybody, right? Only certain people have it. They're going to get angry if I'm not, if I don't sure. respond, right? Sure. Other, other people, if they want to work on their own time, that's got to be a, a departmental policy that's set by that department that is not IT related. Sure. IT can help implement those policies. Yes. Maybe these things don't ring or don't show right. up. There's some sort of a technical solution to help provide that non-24-7 or if it is yep. needed, 24-7. Yeah. Yes. And there are some solutions out there where you can schedule emails to go to a mobile device in certain hours as well. Right? Okay, from 9 to 5 you get your mobile device, but then after 5 o'clock you won't get any more emails. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Okay, uh, next question actually is about our watch uh, guard mugs. Somebody's asking, hey, where can we get these at? There are two people, green guys in the Spiceworks community, Corey and Michelle. So ping them in the community, and I'm sure they can hook you up with something. Okay, next IT question, though, for you is from Hypercube33. I hear from a Spice head on here that we should disable active sync upon an employee termination. Oh, absolutely. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Anything related beyond it. Active sync, anything connection, any and I mean, change password. And you got to have a policy changing <laughs> passwords, keys, going back. That's where your export control comes in. Yes. Did they export a ton of stuff a week ago and all of a sudden leave the company? Ah, there we go. Might want to check mailbox size as well, just in case they just try in case. to decide to blow away a bunch of stuff. Yes. Having a for us, we we do a, for all of our email. I do a external. I I do archiving to the cloud. Yep. So that everything well. that comes through our system. Yeah, go ahead. Delete it out of your inbox. I've still got it, man. Right? <laughs> I mean, that's yep. it. That's, you know. But yes, getting back to the question specifically before we go off Gym on some reads. tangent because we <laughs> love talking about this kind of stuff. Uh, yes, disable active sync. Okay, great. All right, so a couple more questions quickly here. Jason Quick. Hand, this one's for you. Is any, anyone there looking at mobile app management in lieu of MDM to control BYOD? Go. No. That's a lot of abbreviations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hang on. Uh, Bingo. Right. No. No. Oh. No. 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 No mobile application man management as opposed to device itself. Okay. Uh, so the next question from the social media lounge is M. Marsman. Uh, okay. Has anyone deployed an NAC solution as an answer to BYOD? If so, what has your experience been like? Go. What is NAC? NAC. NAC? Uh -oh. <laughs> Heard of NEC? Wow. <laughs> stumped wow. You it know, stumped the IT pros. It stumped the IT, yeah. IT pros. And, and network and access NAC. control, I assume? Uh, ne uh, yeah, network access yes. control. Yes, there we yes. go. Yes. Mm. We, uh, no one on the panel has implemented any <laughs> NAC solutions as For of yet. I mean, other than what we've already talked about, I right? Mean, we, I mean, we, we have we have hardware level 
uh, Soho boxes. We've got two-factor authentication. We've got two different types of VPNs so that you have okay. a fallback. So that's, yeah, so so that's, that's, that's yeah. similar. That would also yeah. fall in the line of the guest access. Yeah, guess what? So you're just preventing them <laughs> access to, you know, your and we, have, we have a customer facing that we use RDP Gateway with. And RDP Gateway allows you to say, to check the system and say, what do they have before we allow them into the network? The okay. gateway sits on the outside of the network and only that gateway has access through the firewall. So that, that's your gatekeeper. He handles, what do you have in your system? What are you connecting? Do you meet He's these requirements? The He's the key master. Yeah, it's a key master and the, gate, and the gatekeeper. There yeah. we go. Okay. God, all right. So we, I think we got a couple time for a couple we got, more. We got one more. One, one, one more. more question, and then I'm going to throw more. it back to you after our lightning round, and you can close us off. So all this right. one's from EW Candia. Uh, uh -huh. Anyways, the question is, is there any BYOD templates that we can change, edit, to use with our office? Go. There were some posts in the community. There are some out on the, on the community. It depends on, again, what level of risk you want to take. Yep. Yeah? Is yep. That, Amen. Amen? All right. Thank you, Todd, and thank you, everyone out there, for watching our, our BYOD webcast. There is one more thing that, uh, that we want to ask, a, a bit of trivia, and this is a, a little contest with the winner getting a plushie from Spiceworks. Um, you can either answer via Twitter or the live stream, but the question is, there's somebody here at Spiceworks whose birthday is today. Who is it? The first person to answer correctly will win this plushie. Touched by Darren Show. Touched? <laughs> well, no, not, not this plushie. A plushie, because you're not going to want to want this one. Uh, we're waiting. Uh, this is a big hint. <laughs> Do we have somebody? Yet. Not yet. Nobody. Are we saying everybody has the plushie? Hang on a minute. Nobody? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Give another hint, Darren. Give an, uh, another hint. Um, he's not human. <laughs> he's orange. Not human. And somebody. Has not, an arm length. No. Arm length deficiency. Not human. <laughs> Nobody's following Andy Phelps in the community. He's saying I'm not human. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, Todd is human. Todd is a human being. He is not some kind of. Jim HMN. Got it. Jim, Jim HMN. All right. <laughs> oh, okay. Here he is. That's right. It's Spice Rex's birthday today. All right. It's. Yes, don't burn the hat. Happy <laughs> birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Spice Rex. Happy birthday to you. All right. Woo! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. So I want to thank our I want I, wa I want to thank our awesome sponsor uh, WatchGuard for uh, bringing this live stream to you today. I, we hope you know we really enjoyed ourselves, and we hope that you learned some things and that uh, you enjoyed yourself as well. I want to thank the panelists and thank you. for for coming and sharing your experience, and I want to thank. Everyone, the whole crew that you can't see here, but there's a whole crew that's actually making this happen. I want to thank those guys as well for doing such an awesome job. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you, SpiceWorks employees.